we are back with Taylor Tales. We're on Dimitri chapter 12 and let's jump straight through into it. I don't actually remember if we had a special, yeah we did. We've got a special client that we need to do before we can jump in. So this is Gwendy. I really like a scallops pattern with blue and greens. All right, oh, that's pretty. Let's get into it. Neckline, we've got a bateau. I don't know how to say that, but that's what I'm going with. Oh, hold on, I need to, here I need to go the color. So we've got so many different colors here, which is a bit of a pain. I feel like it might be that color or it could be, no, it's not quite that color, is it? Just gonna try it all. Try all of the different colors that we have. Like that's, that's not it. I think that's probably the closest we've got. Let's see if we've got any, oh, we need to get it. We need to get the pattern. <sighs> yeah, we need to cancel that. Ah, I didn't realize we had to, oh, by the way, a beautiful little, like, it's like a Valentine's Day type of dress. How cute. Um, we need to go to the shop first to get that skirt pattern. Are you just going to be here? Just be here. Here we go. We have heaps of money, so we don't have to worry. Return. Okay. Now back to the start. Gwendy, come on in. That one, we're saying it's not that color, that color maybe. And is that a, it looks like a darker blue. That underneath color is not right. Is it that color? Could be that color. So we just need to go back. Get so many colors. Let's see. Blue, 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 blue. Is it a? It, it's a blue. I have all of the colors, so it should be one of those. Just, it's not one of those colors. Am I just, it look okay, that color. Maybe, okay, I'm, I'm gonna move on because I think, <laughs> I think that I was right in the start. I just couldn't pick it properly for some unknown reason. And we know our scallop pattern with blue. Oh. Why does that color look different now? What have I done? Hold on. My, wait, so it's this one. Oh, I had it all wrong. I'm not surprised. That, that should be it. 8,000 coins, what the heck? Okay. We are not going to do any more because that took more time than I thought it would. But we can continue! Chapter 12. It's the weekend, so I should be spending it all relaxed and well rested. Yeah. But today is not a good day. I'm wobbling on my feet. I've barely made it out of bed and onto the hallway. I've got an arm wrapped around my stomach. Ooh. Today is the first day of my period. It's made me almost completely immobilized with pain. It's hard to stand up straight or move at all. Oh, I feel you, girl. I feel you. The pain shoots through my entire body, making me collapse against the wall. It's throbbing like mad, a fiery pain in my stomach. Oh, this hurts. I take deep breaths to withstand the pain. 
I see Dimitri around the corner. <gasps> Evelina? What's wrong? He sounds super worried and he rushes over to me. As much as I want to answer him, the cramps get even worse and it knocks the wind out of me. I'm unable to move, much less spare any oxygen to answer Dimitri. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping it'll pass soon. Are you okay? Dimitri asks, unabated. Another round of contractions, <laughs> and I helplessly buckle over, sliding against the walls. Dimitri catches me in his arms and holds me close to his chest. Oh. I'm, I'm calling an ambulance! Dimitri exclaims in panic. Don't do it. <laughs> Taking in all the strength that, I, strength that I have, I shake my head, clinging onto his shirt. Why do men always assume that you need to call an ambulance, you need to go to the hospital? It's just what we deal with. Please, no, I say in an unsteady voice. <laughs> Tell him the truth and that you're on your period or I just need to lie down. <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm on my period. I think that there should be nothing wrong with saying that you're on your period. It happens all of the time. He lives with a girl. Get over it. Huh? What? Why not? You can't even stand up straight. I'm going to call them. I squeeze my eyes shut and take in another deep breath. I'm on my period. I say loud and clear. The pain protracts a little and my strength is returning slightly. I stand up straight and push myself away from Dimitri's chest. He's looking at me weirdly, as if he doesn't know what to do with me. <sighs> I'm... I'm sorry. He looks down on the floor. Is there anything I can do to relieve the pain? Honestly, I didn't expect Dimitri to be so understanding. Then again, I don't know why I expected him to run away yelling, Ick! Or something. <laughs> oh, Ick! Yuck! Yucky! Sorry. <laughs> He's always been considerate and understanding. It's in his nature. That's what it should be. Uh, hmm. Fluffy pillows and some paracetamol, I say. Damn, for those types? Mmm, okay. I mean, I would have gone for something a bit stronger and a hot water bottle, but okay. You do you. Ugh, I groan out loud as a nasty pain paralyzes me to my core. My mind goes numb from the pain and briefly my world turns black. Oh, God, paracetamol is not going to do much for you if you're back blacking out. Get on the strong stuff. Okay, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that. That's she might be perfectly good with paracetamol. When I open my eyes again, I'm in Dimitri's arms, pressed up against his warm chest. I feel myself getting lowered onto my bed, his arms slipping away from me as my head hits the pillow. The pain is still there. How long I pause as I cringe in pain. How long was I out for? Dimitri looks at me. His face contorted into an almost permanent frown. He's definitely worried for me. Uh. About 30 seconds, give or take. Um. Is this normal for you? He asks in a soft voice. I close my eyes and think. It's been like this ever since I hit 18 for some reason. It was tolerable before, but one day my cramps got so bad that I started passing out from the pain. I'd find myself on the floor, not remembering how I fell, completely blacking out the experience. Don't worry, I'm not dying or anything, <laughs> I joke, trying to light the moon. But yeah, this can happen from time to time every month. Let me go get some medicine, that should help. In the bathroom cabinet, right? Yes, and a glass of water would be nice too. Dimitri gives me a firm nod and disappears from my bedroom. I curl up into a fetal position, hugging my fluffy pillow close to my body. It's embarrassing Dimitri has to see me like this, so weak and powerless, all because of my monthly period. I can hide it from the outside world, but it's hard to hide the pain in my own home, especially when I live with someone else. There's no escape here. I'm glad he's here though, carrying me to my bed. A minute later and Dimitri walks through my door holding a small white tablet and a glass of water. He sits down on the edge of my bed and hands them over to me. 
I sit up straight and quickly down the medicine with some water. Thanks, I say with a slight and painful smile. I place the glass on my night nightstand and I slump back into my pillow. Now it's time to wait until it kicks in. Uh. Anything else? Just tell me, he offers. I give him a weak smile. No, that's all right. All I can do right now is wait for the medicine to work. Thank you for taking me to my bedroom. A sharp pang in my abdomen makes me wince once more. Ugh, I hate being on my period. Um. I will, um, I'll make some comfort food. How about that? Dimitri suggests. Yes. <laughs> he seems eager to help. It's kind of cute. It's a little embarrassing and everything, but he's trying to take care of me. I'd like that, I answer. He looks at me, unable to really move away from my bed, as if I will perish if he leaves. He's so concerned about my well-being. I've never had a guy this worried about my period cramps before. He's a keeper. <laughs> I'm glad Dimitri is not like other guys, not like Alex, whom referred to this as Shark Week and never so much as lifted a finger to help me. Then Dimitri moves in closer, a bit hesitant and unsure. His fingers reach out for me, stopping for a split second to pull back a tiny bit, then finally touches my hair. Dimitri slowly starts to stroke my head, his fingers slipping through my long hair. It's comforting. I close my eyes, savoring the feeling as I lean into his hand. It's making me forget I'm in pain. Dimitri is very gentle. It's such a nice sensation. I don't want him to stop. Mm. Hang in there, he says in a gentle tone. Hang in there, champ. Before I know it, Dimitri's hand is nowhere near my head and he's left the room. That nice sense of security he provided only seconds ago slowly fades away. I'm accurately aware of the pain in my abdomen again. I think it's meant to be acutely. That's cool. Oh good. I close my eyes as I try to focus on anything but the pain. I must have fallen asleep as the next time I open my eyes, it's dark in my room. My cramps have disappeared for the most part. The first two days are always the worst. But once I manage to get through those days, the rest is a piece of cake. My eyes adjust themselves to the darkness and I notice a shadowy figure resting on my bed. It's Dimitri, his arms folded across my mattress, resting his head on top of them while he sits on the floor next to my bed. His eyes are closed and he seems fast asleep. There's a bowl of food on my nightstand. It smells like chicken soup. Ah, oh, Dimitri must have cooked for me, but I fell asleep when he got back. Did he stay beside me this entire time until he fell asleep too? Slowly I take the glasses off his face and put them next to the bowl of soup. Wouldn't want him breaking his glasses like this. And I don't have the heart to wake him up either. Oh, I would. That sounds so uncomfortable. His concern for my well-being is giving me a pleasant, buoyant feeling. It reminds me a little of when we first met, when he handed me his vest so I could cover my wet t-shirt. It's the same back then. He didn't make fun of me like other guys would. Or in this case, I think it's disgusting to even know that I'm on my period. He didn't shame me. Instead, he showed some compassion and tried to help me out. Dimitri keeps impressing me. Oh. <gasps> That's cute. I'm gonna stroke you. I lay down on my side and my fingers reach out towards his now messy brown hair. I push my fingertips through his mane. It's soft and silky. I can't resist stroking him like this, grazing my fingers across his scalp, just like he did to me earlier today. Thank you, Dimitri. You're so kind to me. I appreciate it. Dimitri stirs in his sleep, but doesn't budge from the spot. With a smile on my face, I keep breaking my fingers through his hair until I fall back asleep myself. The next day, I see Dimitri is already cooking breakfast in the kitchen. No wait, scratch that. I don't think Dimitri is making breakfast. My entire kitchen is covered with chocolates. There are bonbons everywhere. They're littered around every available surface space on my kitchen counter. Oh, oh hey, you're up. Dimitri greets me with a warm smile. 
yeah, uh, what is all of this? I ask, using my arms to gesture at the state of my kitchen. Dimitri is holding a piping bag and squeezes out some white chocolate onto several bonbons all lined up so they are co covered in crisscross patterns. It looks really interesting. The way Dimitri handles the bag looks so professional. Sometimes I forget this is Dimitri's future profession. Yeah. I'm making chocolate for you. Yes. I pause to stare at my surroundings. There's like hundreds of bonbons here. Uh, are these all for me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he picks up a small bunny shaped bonbon made with white chocolate. Try it. Before I can protest, Dimitri is holding the chocolate near my lips, looking at me with those hopeful eyes. He intends to feed it to me. I part my lips and take the chocolate from his fingers and into my mouth. The chocolate instantly starts to melt on my tongue. The inside has a creamy hazelnut filling. Yum! Mm, it's good! That's really tasty! I complica compl complicate. I compliment him with a smile. Mm. Dimitri smiles back at me. Happy I'm enjoying the chocolate. But why? I gesture towards the other bonbons lying about. Why so many? Are you trying to make me fat? <laughs> no, no, he denies immediately. I just heard that, well, you get these cravings. Is he talking about what that stereotype where that women get cravings for chocolate when they're on the period? I mean, I don't personally get it. I crave it regardless of whether I'm on my period or not. I know that's not what it says, but you know, whatever. But to think this is the reason Dimitri has filled up my entire kitchen with bonbons. This is going to last me several months. That's how much chocolate is lying around. But that's so sweet. Oh goodness. That's so sweet of you, Dimitri. But I don't really get those types of cravings. That sound was not cool. Dimitri squirts some chocolate out of the piping bag by accident. He looks heartbroken. Mm. Oh, but that's okay. I say hastily. I didn't mean to make him sad. I'll eat these up, no problem. I love chocolate. Thank you for making these. He shyly turns his head away. I didn't know what else to do to make you feel better. Oh, he's pulling at my heartstrings. Dimitri is so worried about me. He's making hundreds of bonbons to make me feel better. How are you feeling right now? Are you in less pain? Much less. You really don't need to worry about it. It's usually the first two days that it hurts a lot. Right now, I'm okay. I pick up one of the bonbons that Dimitri has, was decorating right before I walked into the kitchen and I pop it into my mouth. This one has raspberry filling on the inside. Yum. Goodness, it's like Dimitri could start his own chocolate tree. But I don't know how that's it. These are made really well. Uh. Dimitri looks around the kitchen with a tiny sigh. I may have been a bit overzealous. Just a bit, I tease him. Here, why don't you try some yourself? <laughs> Feed him a bonbon. <laughs> I pick up a bonbon, take a step closer, and I hover it near Dimitri's lips. Say ah! As expected, he acts timid and his face turns pink. When he's the one feeding me, me. He's okay with it. But when I'm the one feeding him, he suddenly gets all flustered. <laughs> oh, look at him blush. Nonetheless, Dimitri leans forward and takes the chocolate off my hands with his pearly white teeth. His blue eyes make contact with mine, holding my gaze as he pulls back and chews on the bonbon. Mm. You're right. These are tasty, he agrees. What? You haven't tried them yet? I say with a chuckle. Uh. Oh, it's much more fun making chocolate for someone than it is to eat them myself. I like make pe making people smile with my sweets. Don't worry, Dimitri. Just being yourself is sweet enough that it makes me have a permanent smile stuck on my face. His sweetness will eventually give me cavities. A noble cause, huh? I look around at all the, all the bonbons, wondering what to do with them. I don't think I can finish these all by myself. Ah, you don't have to. I'm sorry for making so much. I got too into it. No worries. I think I can give them, give some of them to Sarah maybe, I suggest. <laughs> sure. Which flavours does she dislike? 
I know what you're thinking, Dimitri. Hmm, I think she hates anything orange flavored. Dimitri walks over to a tray of square bonbons. <laughs> then she'd probably like these, he says with an innocent smile. Oh, Evelina, come on, get with it. All right, we can keep those separate. You can stop making more now. Let's clean up this place up. No, I'm not gonna let you work today. It's Sunday and you're still hurting, so please rest. I made this mess. I can also clean it up. Dimitri looks so stubborn as he says this. It's hard to disagree with him. Okay, fine, but let me know if you need my help. I leave Dimitri in the kitchen alone. Well, that was chapter 12 of Dimitri. A lot of period talk and chocolate. Oh my God, I want chocolate now. I just found the stash that was hidden away in my kitchen. So that might be a thing. But anyway, I hope you liked it. I may or may not play any more of this. We'll see. Um, but see you later. Bye.